Mana Onskart is a treasure diver. Here in the murky depths of the mighty Chao Praya River in Bangkok, he and his team dive for lost valuables. Centuries ago, Thai royals, merchants and immigrants from all over the world settled on the banks of the river. Even today, the Chao Praya remains a treasure trove. But a new promenade under construction along the river threatens the livelihoods of the divers who scour the riverbed for sunken valuables. Mana Onsgaard's home looks a bit like an antique store. He can't sell everything he salvages from the river straight away. It's best to collect as much as possible before looking for a buyer. In recent weeks, he's collected amulets, coins and glass beads. Mana comes home with the haul pretty much every single day, but it doesn't always include anything of real value. If I find something underwater that I think could be gold, I bite on it. Most metals have a bitter taste, but gold doesn't taste of anything. It's heavy and smooth. A gold breastplate is the most valuable thing I ever found. It was seven years ago after the 2011 floods. I got 1,300 euros for it. I sold this ring for 800 euros. That was a while ago. The buyers are antique dealers. Mana doesn't want to name them. He knows the whole trade in sunken treasure is a legal grey area. Of course, all these things belonged to someone before they ended up in the water. But as long as they aren't national relics, you can keep them. I have had some encounters with the authorities, but one man's trash is another man's treasure. Mana is always excited when he finds old votive statues made of clay. Even if they're not worth much, he loves it when he finds broken parts and can piece an entire figure back together again. His collection is his pride and joy. Mana lives in a house on stilts, directly on the river. The settlement is called Metakam and was built around a hundred years ago. Mana's grandfather was one of the first inhabitants. Today, the floating village of Mitakam is home to about 120 people. Most of the men are treasure divers, like Mana. <laughs> Mana's 11-year-old daughter goes to school, and his wife Yui works as a chambermaid in a hotel. She used to go out with him when he went diving, but only as a lookout. Traditionally, women don't dive themselves. It's not women's work, unless you're especially brave. The thought of being underwater scares me. You don't know what's down there, shards of glass, nails. My husband is an experienced diver, but I still worry every time he goes diving. Mana likes to make an early start. In the morning, the current is less strong and there are fewer tourist boats on the water. He has his own boat that he keeps moored outside his house. The treasure divers always work in pairs. The job's too dangerous to do alone. Mana and his partner Prayad have been working together for years. They share the proceeds of whatever they find. I trust him completely. If you're not experienced, diving can be fatal. My partner is like a submarine periscope. If there's a problem, he tugs the dive line, and I know I need to head back up straight away. 
The current can be treacherous, while the ship traffic on the river poses another potential danger. The Chao Praya is one of the city's busiest arteries. Mana learned to dive from his father. It's the only skill he has. I was 12 when I started helping my father, and 16 the first time I went down by myself. I found a few coins that dated back to the Chulalongkorn era. It was so exciting. It felt amazing. His homemade diving helmet is the most important piece of equipment. It weighs over 20 kilos. The treasure divers are a close-knit community. Even though they're rivals, at the end of the day, they have each other's backs. Yesterday, one of the other divers found a tiny piece of gold downriver. Now all the others are eager to try their luck there too. They're gripped by gold rush fever. While Prayad lays anchor, Mana gets ready for his first dive. That involves the traditional Y crew ceremony. Mana pays his respects to his ancestors and asks them to protect him. His partner puts the heavy helmet on his head. And then he's off. The weight of it pushes him straight under. There's zero visibility underwater. The river has a maximum depth of 20 meters. On the riverbed, Mana has to feel his way forward. Back on the boat, Priyad makes sure to pump down enough air. After half an hour, Mana still hasn't resurfaced. That's unusual. Normally, he doesn't stay under that long. He's been down there a while. I'm looking forward to seeing what he's found. Divers in a nearby boat have recovered a piece of scrap metal. It's not exactly treasure, but they'll get a few baht for it. Mana finally comes back up. He shows us a handful of coins that he's found. Mana's also brought up some sludge from the riverbed, which they'll sift through in search of other valuables. Today's findings include a piece of fishing sinker and a few more coins from the 19th century. I'm happy enough. Coins like these aren't all that special. I find quite a few of them. You can get one or two hundred baht for them. Obviously gold is much more valuable, but gold isn't something you find every day. Mana and Prayat spent about six hours on the water today, taking it in turns to go diving. By the end of the day, they've recovered some two dozen old coins. They'll make about 25 euros, over three times more than what they would have earned in a minimum wage job. Mana hopes he'll be able to continue making a living as a treasure diver. The river is a gift that keeps on giving. Well, I'm sure there's lots more in the river. You just need some luck and the right current to find it. The current keeps unearthing more of the riverbed. It's like farming. 
You have to know the best time to harvest. But even if the Chao Praya River hasn't relinquished all its treasure yet, the village of Mitakam's days are numbered. The houses on stilts will be removed for the new riverside promenade. The residents will have to move out by next year. Many have already found new homes. Some of the huts have been torn down. Mana and his family are worried. The authorities have offered to relocate the residents of Mitakam, but to a piece of land that's 10 kilometers away, a long way from the river. Mana has always lived on the water. He doesn't want to move to what he calls the mainland. It's too loud and busy. My family has lived on the water for decades. I'm a treasure diver like my father and my grandfather before me. We never learned to do anything else. If we have to leave our home, I don't know what the future will hold. He wouldn't be able to carry on diving to make a living. If he didn't live directly on the water, it just wouldn't be a viable option anymore, says Mana. But he hopes the city planners will change their minds about the project, and he'll be able to stay and keep plying the only trade that he knows.